الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد Continue on in our discussion about nikah and about the importance of choosing a righteous spouse and the encouragement to marry. We reached a very important hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in this hadith, It shows us the important and the exhortion in Islam that the Prophet ﷺ exhorted us to, to marry and establish the mar marital bond in Islam if we're able to do so. And that is, as we mentioned before, very, very important for the believers to unite and establish the Muslim community and to have children, in essence to be fruitful and multiply, in order to strengthen the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam based on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يا معشر الشباب من استطاع منكم الباءة فليتزوج فإنه أغضى للبصر وأحسن للفرج ومن لم يستطع فعليه بالصوم فإنه فإنه له وجاء رواه بخاري ومسلم This hadith is imperative for us The hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which offers so much insight and gives us a prescription for many of the issues that we face. For example, the issues of adultery, fornication, masturbation, all of these issues that when it's time to marry, marry. And choose a spouse that's pleasing to you. And choose a spouse that's going to help you be a better believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, ask for the good... ربنا آتنا في حسن ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسن وفي الآخرة حسن وقينا ذا بالنار. O Allah, bless us with the good in this life and the good in the hereafter, and protect us from the hellfire. And you want a righteous spouse that will help you come closer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى, that will give you good in this life as well as the hereafter, and will be pleasing to you in this life. As well as the hereafter. So pleasing in the religion, but pleasing also that you're attracted to the person. Because that's the person you want, that person, that should be a strengthening for you to help you lessen your desires for doing that which is impermissible. So it's very important in cho to choose a righteous spouse. But getting back to the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, as was reported by Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O you sh O Shabab, youth, he addressed the youth. And he said, Whoever is able from amongst you, Al Ba'a, Al Ba'ata, Faliatazoj, whoever amongst you is able to, then they should marry. And then he said, why? This is the issues that we face. He says, because فَإِنَّهُ That it is, will help you lower your gaze. It's more protecting for lowering your gaze because we're ordered to lower our gaze. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to restrict our gaze. And may Allah forgive us of our many shortcomings because many of us find it very difficult to lower the gaze. But that's going to help protect your iman and protect your religion and protect you from the muharram. So marriage will help you lower your gaze and help you to safeguard your private parts because you won't be, your desires won't be so crazy where you're looking to do the haram. And who
whoever is unable to do so, then they should fast. For verily, it makes you, the fasting helps your desires to be lessened. It weakens your desires. And that's collected in Bukhari and Muslim. Many benefits of this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Before we even get into the explanation that the, what the Shaykh brought out as some of the benefits, but I just wanted to point out those very important things that choosing a righteous spouse, and a spouse that you're pleased with, that's going to help you use your desires in a lawful way, in a lawful manner, through the halal, then this is going to help you avoid the muharram. This can help by if we use this prescription and we make it easier for our youth to get married by not by the women not having such very high and expensive mahars, you know, their, their dowries being very outrageous where the men can't afford to do so. Or that they put so many restrictions on the person before marriage that, that it's almost impossible for them to complete. Or some people, because of racism and, and tribalism, they protect their, their daughters and stuff. That, no, we don't want to, that person's not the right color. That person's not the right race. That person, this and that. Okay, look at the harm you're causing in your societies to do this. Due to this, we have a lot of uh, people going to pornography. Due to this, we have a lot of people masturbating. Due to this, we have a lot of people, uh, even some people experimenting with homosexuality and other things. And committing... Uh, uh, for fornication and adultery. Why? Because the people have made it difficult to marry and put all kind of restrictions. And that is not from the Sunnah. The Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam is the mahar should be easy. It should be easy so that in order, the woman has the right to choose whatever she wants though. If she wants $100,000 in gold, so be it. That's what you got to, if you want to marry that woman, that's going to be. But from the sunnah, the best is for her to make it easy on, on him to marry. What he's able to do as far as her dowry. Going back to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, so this prescription from the Prophet ﷺ will help us with a lot of the issues we face in our communities. Some of the benefits we gain of this hadith Shaykh Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, may Allah bless him with Jannah to Firdaus Amin for this immense work that he left behind, as well as the Imam Maqdisi, who is the one who compiled these hadith, as well as Bukhari and Muslim and, and the, the, the ulama and the salaf of this ummah. Radi Allah ta'ala majma'in. May Allah be pleased with all of them and bless them all with Jannah to Firdaus and forgive them all of their sins and shortcomings. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. He said, Shaykh Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, this hadith encourages the youth that are able to marry, meaning that they're able to, and, and the Shaykh put in parentheses, he said that he's able to um, take care of his wife by, by, you know, paying for her home, you know, nafaka, to pay for her, her clothing, to pay for her home, to pay for her food and drink. And he, he also, uh, he mentioned also her mahar. So that for the person who's able to, that this hadith encourages us, encourages, encourages them to act and get married. You know, to go ahead and, and get married. If they're able to meet the responsibilities of marriage. And some of the ulama they mention with that, and this is in order, and this is in order to prevent, uh, you know, because as youth we have extra when when at the time of uh, youthfulness, men and women their their desires are stronger. In general, so that this is a way to deal with that, those strong desires, harness it by putting it in a lawful context, and that is through the marriage institution of marriage. Some of the ulama, they mention with ba'a that that, that that term is referring not just to uh, 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 those financial means, but also meaning the ability to uh, physical, physical that he's, that for example, the husband or and the woman that he is able, that he has the strength to be able to take care of the, 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 
physical needs of his partner as well as the, the wife for her husband. So that if he if the man is able to, not just financially, but here the, the meaning uh, as Sheikh Ali Bassam and, and, and some of the Mashaykh we studied with say that this meaning here is related to the financial means. But also inclusive is that for example, if a man, he has financial means, but he, maybe he's an old man and he wants to marry a 16-year-old girl or a 17-year-old girl, as it's only permissible in this culture in the West. To They have to be, I think, uh, the age of consent is 18, I believe. So he wants to marry a young girl, 18, and, she, and, and the man is 60, 70, 80. Well, they're mismatched. And he more than likely does not have, even if she is willing to be in a situation like that, he more than likely does not have the ability physically to be able to meet her needs. A, six, a young girl at 18 in her prime, 19, 20, she has a lot of energy. And the man plus more than likely will not be able to keep up with her desire. So this can also be uh, uh, something that causes fitna, causes harm and, 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 and problems in the society due to this. But here... The meaning is the ability refers to uh, uh, financial that he can meet he can uh, give her her, her, her her dowry and he is able to financially take care of her. Another benefit of this hadith that Sheikh mentions he says, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, so the Sheikh brings this, this statement of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, may Allah have mercy on all of them. He said that the ability here for nikah is, is not in reference, to, this is referring to being able to take care of her financially and so forth. And it is not in reference to the ability, his ability to uh, have sexual relations. And though that's some of the argument of Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Another benefit of this hadith is the reason that this hadith uh, addresses the youth is because, of course, as we already mentioned, the youth in their prime, they are in their sexual prime as well. So they are eager to uh, have relations and they have that energy and they are in need of harnessing that energy in a lawful means. And this is uh, very important to consider. Uh, and this is why the Prophet ﷺ addressed the youth with this. Another benefit of this hadith the Shaykh mentions is that the by marrying, this is uh, one of the reasons, you know, through marriage and having relations with your spouse is one of the things that helps to harness your desires, helps to keep, uh, helps to keep a person focused, so to speak, to keep the man, to help him lower his gaze, to look at only his wife, you know, that which is lawful for him, and the woman likewise, you know, so that way they're not mesmerized by the TV and mesmerized by the internet and mesmerized by what they see on the street, but instead, they're, they're not distracted and they're focused on their partner. The more they have relations with between them in a lawful context, this also helps to get less in the shahwa. You know, this helps you. So this so marriage is a medicine in that respect, having and having those lawful relations to help lower the gaze to do that which is lawful and help protect a person's private parts. Another benefit of this hadith. is that also the person who is unable to uh, marry, that they should fast. And fasting also helps to lessen the desires. So the more we fast, as those who have fasted the month of Ramadan, they experience, it does help to lessen your, your desires by the more you fast, because it seems, and Allah knows best, the relationship between the desires, a full stomach, and your 
uh, sexual desires, that there's relationship. And Ibn al-Qayyim wrote extensively about this. But even you can experience that in your own life, that certain foods, and by eating too much, you find a lot of times that it sort of heightens and increases your sexual desires. So by fasting and restraining those things, and restraining your appetite, it restrains also your physical appetite, your your, your sexual appetite. So it, it's there's those physiological benefits, and that is some of the benefits of this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And another benefit of this hadith, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said that whoever does not possess money, is it recommended for them to take a loan and marry, you know, to have the, the, the means to, to, to borrow the money, to, to marry? And he said, as far as the madhab of Imam Ahmed, that there is uh, some differences of opinion regarding this issue. And that, and from the other uh, madhabs. So he, Sheikh Al Islam brought that issue up. And he, he mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Will you stop if will you will uh will you stop if will you stop if you 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 will that those people should restrain themselves and try to remain chaste who do not have the ability until Allah increases their their wealth from his his benefits so that they're able to marry so that's a good mas'ala you know should a person go into debt or not and and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and it seems from Shaykh al-Islam's using that ayat that that verse in the Quran that it seems to me he's saying that it's better not to necessarily go into debt but to be patient and wait to a person uh, that Allah has favored them with, you know, uh, the appropriate work and so forth. And another issue that is mentioned here is the ulama, they mention that the five ahkam of uh, taklifiya, that they are appropriate with regards to nikah and so forth. Meaning that sometimes nikah, sometimes it's an obligation to get married. Sometimes it is recommended to get married. Sometimes for some people it is, um, it is uh, disliked to get, for them to get married. And for some people it is haram to get married. So let's just see if we can look at some of those, those, those different issues and situations when it could apply. When would it be uh, an obligation for someone to get married? So in the situation where someone cannot control themselves and they are afraid of falling into... Uh, uh, adultery or fornication. In this situation, if they have the means, they must get married. They must rush to get married. And possibly in that situation, even if they have to take a loan to get married, then perhaps so that way can, they can take care of their family or what have you, if they have the means hopefully to be able to pay it back over a decent amount of time, then they should get married. So under a situation like that, they're afraid of doing the haram, then it's an obligation. It's mustahab in general to get married. A person, it's recommended that if they're able to, they should get married. The third situation might be a person who, when it's makru, when is it disliked to get married? It's disliked if it is going to, uh, perhaps a husband wants, perhaps a man is married and he wants to take a second wife. But by taking a second wife, it's and it's not really a necess necess necessity for him to take another wife, and it's going to be a harm for his his family. It's going to be a harm on his other wife, or it's going to cause some disharmony. Then perhaps, and Allah knows best, in a situation like that, maybe it would be makru, makru. And then there are times when actually it can be muharram to marry, for example, and Allah knows best, and I, I, I wish I had some examples from the scholars, but from, I'll try to recall some examples, but perhaps if 
someone is trying to get, uh, they don't have the means to take care of their family and so forth, then in that situation it could be Muharram. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad.